Hello, it's great to be back and a really warm welcome to you. I'm not upstairs with the old vintage railway today. I'm in, well, it's the evening. I'm just doing a bit of extra work and I've found a bit of time to do some model railway related stuff. So I'm going to make a video. Uh, I didn't think I'd have time, but I am going to slip this one in. So I hope you find it enjoyable. I'm going to talk about uh, one of these, the Hornby 00 Ringfield motor. I've done a few things on the channel with this motor but I thought it'd be quite interesting to talk about this particular one now let me just turn the lathe off you can see I've got an armature rotating there well a subscriber sent me a motor that they said wasn't running brilliantly and I had to agree with them I put it in my test chassis and it was running very badly and the first thing I found was that it was slightly bent in the shaft and the end bearing now I think that what had happened was it had been put into a loco. You can see the mounting screw there. And I think they'd got the teeth sitting in the wrong position. So when the motor was tightened down, there was a lot of pressure on the armature and it just caused the bend. So it's a shame I didn't have my camera when I first put it in there, because let me tell you, it was wobbling around all over the place, but I've got it nice and straight. So I've found something else wrong with it. Now I think we'll move over to my little workbench a little bit further over to the right and I'll show you what I've found and how I hope to mend it. So we'll take a look at that now. Okay well we're over now on the little workbench and the motor that I showed you earlier, the example motor, I've just put on this little chassis I've got which is what I test my ring fields on and it's running quite nicely. So it's just set it at a slow speed there. And here's the armature. Look at this. So let's see if I can get a decent close up. You can see the bearing by the commutator there. Well, this bearing was bent. That's level now. And there was also a slight bend on this end of the worm, but it's leveled up well. But see now if I rotate it, whether you can see what I've spotted. So let's just rotate it and have a look. Yeah, did you? can you see that? Look, there's one of the commutator slots. There's the other. But check this one out. Bit big, isn't it? So let's have a look down the end. Um, and it's got a crack in it. It's just spread. So we've got a little bit of a, an out of sort of kilter commutator on this armature. And I am going to change it. Now, as luck would have it, and if I just put this down, I went into my stores and uh, I do have a couple of spare ones in stock. So I'm going to put one of these. I'm going to replace the damaged one and put one of these on. Now, that's going to be a bit of fun. I'll probably try and show you how I unsolder the wires. We'll get that set up in a minute. But before we do, um, and uh, I hope to end this short video this week with a little bit of running because you might notice over there is the city of Stoke-on-Trent. And if you've seen the last few videos, you'll know I've had a bit of fun with this. It's now got a five pole armature, but I'm just going to pick it up um, and see whether I can show you something else I've done to it. So let me bring it into view and just to sort of pass a bit of spare time late at night. Now, I wonder if you can see what's different about this model now. OK, well, I'm not going to keep you in suspense. What it has got is some slightly larger driving wheels. Now, I know that when Wren sort of got to the near the end of production, they did change driving wheels on the A4s and the Cities. Um, and I set myself thinking about this the other day. I've got this chassis and um, if I pick it up, you might recognize it, but it's uh, it's from a castle. And I thought, well, that's got some slightly larger wheels and they look quite nice. So these are the wheels that were on the sort of city of Stoke-on-Trent. And I've now put them on this test mule and um, it's still good enough to run on the rolling road. But I think that the city of Stoke-on-Trent looks rather splendid and they're probably wrong and I'm sure a few of you are going to say they're totally the wrong diameter still or the spokes are wrong well it's a toy train 
but I think it looks rather good. Now, we will go up to the main Super 4 layout later in this video and compare this with either a standard Stoke-on-Trent or another city. But I love the way this looks now. So we've got the five pole armature sitting in there. We've got these slightly larger wheels fitted and the whole loco is looking rather meaningful and splendid. So I'm going to have a bit of fun running this with you later um, and I can't wait to do it. But what we are going to do in a minute is see whether I can just, let me just get this into focus, unsolder these wires very carefully from this existing but damaged commutator and remove it and then we'll have a look and see what's going to be involved getting the new one on, whether it needs reaming or whether it's just going to press on. Now for timing, because you do have to time electric motors, if I hold it in this direction you can see that the slots in the commutator line up exactly halfway between the pole pieces. So that's all I've got to do when I put it on and then very carefully resolder the wires. OK, I think what I'll do now is just pause the video slightly. Um, we'll get a soldering iron warmed up and I'll see if I can get the camera in a position to show you me unsoldering these wires and freeing off this crack commutator. OK, well, this is going to be quite interesting because I'm only really going to get one shot at trying to unsolder this. So if I make a mistake, I make a mistake. Let's hope not. But uh, my soldering iron says it's warm enough. And I'm going to try and see whether I can just unsolder it. So what I'm going to do just is just I'm cleaning the tip just on a little bit of wet sponge. And then I'm just going to melt the slightest amount of new solder onto the tip. Um, and then I've got this little screwdriver. Um, and I hope there's not too much shaking, but let's see what happens. Right. Now, I do hope you can see that I've managed to just free off one of those pieces of wire. I'm turning it round now. Going to have a go at the next one. OK, that's two done. Let's see if I can just get the final one freed off. OK, so I'm just going to put soldering iron off, pop it back in there for safety. Now, just bear with me while I try and get a bit nearer to the camera. And let's just look. Uh, let's see if I can show you. Hopefully you can see that the wires have come off and they're just lying nicely to the side. OK, now, even though this is split, I bet it's going to be very tight. So I'm going to have to devise. Sorry, that went out of shot, didn't it? Many apologies. I'm going to have to devise a way of pulling it off. I mean, I will just get my fingernail behind it. That's on very tight. So it's almost shrunk on to the shaft, I think. Something's probably just change the properties of the inner parts of the commutator have changed it's got tighter and tighter and it's opened up now what i must do is make sure i don't damage the windings so i haven't got anything prepared just at the second so i am going to pause the camera and just see whether i can draw this off so we'll be back in a second and we'll see whether i've got it off okay well nothing very technical. What I can tell you is I just got um, a very small pair of pliers and applied a little bit of pressure to one edge. Now it seemed very tight but then it sort of started moving quite well so I am thinking maybe I'll be able to pull it off now. Um, so I've made a bit of a 
a liar of myself there, haven't I? So let's just see whether I can ease it a fraction more. So I'm just carefully, I'll put a little bit more pressure on and it's, it's slid along the shaft. And I must be careful, so that's still not uh, coming off. So I, I mean, it's not really in great condition, so I'm gonna grasp it there. Right, so let's look at the components. So we've got our armature there, and I think you can probably see there's splines on the armature shaft where the commutator goes. And it does almost look like it's gone a little bit rusty, or maybe something's got in there and opened it up. So let's have a look at the offending article. There's our big section. It's, I don't know, it's not, it's not very easy to see the crack, but it has cracked. Um, yeah, we've got to replace that. Okay, well, let's have a look at uh, one of the new ones. Now, showing you how prepared I am, I haven't got it out of the bag, so <clears throat> please just bear with me. So here's one of the new ones, and rather like the original, it's, it's got a slightly, the bit that goes towards the armature, slightly curved and then flat. So I wonder what the dimensions are like. Well, already I can tell that that's probably going to press on. So that's quite good, isn't it? So what I'm going to have to do is I think off camera, because I'm only going to get one chance at this and I'm going to need both hands. I'm going to clean out these slots, whatever that is, whether it's rust or some sort of glue, I'm just going to clean that out and clean it all up. And then I'm going to see whether I can get this new commutator in the right position. And let's just remember that I've got to get the slot lined up with halfway between the pole pieces and then I should be able to push it on. Now I think maybe before I do push it on, I'm just going to clean up the copper a bit and tin it with solder. So I've already got a good bit of solder just on that inner edge. So I've got a couple of little jobs to do and then I'll be back with you and we'll take a look and see whether I've had any success. Okay folks, well it's a few minutes later now and I just wanted you to see that the new commutator has gone on very nicely. I lined up the slots and I've just tinned very carefully a little bit of solder on there. Now, I'm only going to get one go at doing this nicely, so I'm not clever enough to do it on camera for you. So you've got to forgive me. I'm going to just uh, very carefully solder these windings back and then we'll come back and look at the finished article. But I'm really pleased with how this has gone on. The gaps are all nice and even, and I'm pretty sure this is going to run quite well. OK, time for me to try and solder these wires on. OK, well, we don't have any fancy editing. I'm just going to show you exactly how it looks. But they're good solder joints. But what I will do is pop it in the lathe and just tidy it up a bit. Just spin it round and clean up the excess and just make it look a little bit more professional. I didn't want to get too much heat in it because the wire is very thin. It's already been undone, but it's looking good. And I think there's a little bit of something happened. Let's just come back to it it was a splash of solder just on the windings there. So I have done my best to be tidy. Um, so I'll give it a bit of a tidy up and then we'll take some resistance readings and build the motor back up. Okay, well, I've been a bit longer away because of my dinner and a few other bits. So time's run out this evening, but I can show you this. Now it's been in the lathe. And it looks pretty good, doesn't it? I've removed the excess solder and uh, perhaps not quite as good as factory, but it looks OK. So let's see what we've got on the meter. 
So hopefully, first of all, I'll just do a check to the earth. So I can check the laminations there. Got a good contact, but no, it's looking good. So let's go between the poles. So we'll start off here. And if you have a quick look at the meter as I go, 6.2. It's just a bit fiddly. 6.2 and one more. Just slip there. Let's just try again. 6.2. OK, so I'm happy with that. All the readings, excuse me, I've just dropped my probes on the floor there. All the readings are within tolerance. And I think I've got most of the solder splatter out. I can just see a little bit in there. Um, you just, and I'm just going to do this very gently. Well, it's amazing where solder gets when you're cleaning and just, just, bit of the old human compressed air on that so let's see now how it looks so the commentators on nice and firm we're all soldered back up resistances are good so I'm looking forward to getting this motor together so when I get time tomorrow I'm going to slip this motor together and we'll have a look at it in the test mule. So let's just see what we've got. Let's put these bits on the table. There's the, um, oh, it's funny the old focus plays up, but there's the, look at that, that crack's really opened up. That's no good. That's the one we've replaced. And then over here, I've got the, the body of the motor. I've remagnetized the ring field magnet. And then, if I can just see whether I can just show you the, the other bits that are just in this little container. Let's have a look. There's a couple of brush springs. Whoops, there's a triang armature in there. I don't know why that's in there. Let's see if I can get that out. We don't really need that, do we? That's seen better days, that X04 armature, that's a burnt out one. So we'll definitely have to try and rewind that at some point. But um, there should be two brushes in there, a couple of brush springs and four screws. So we'll give that a good clean up and hopefully the ball bearing is in situ. I think you can see it in there and I'll double check the bearings in this end of the motor whether we can see, I don't know, the light's not brilliant. Let's just try it from this direction. I think it's in there. I'll double check that before I put it together. But we'll come back when I've got this motor together and we'll put it into our little test chassis, which I've got here. So I'll take this motor out, which is mine. And um, hopefully, uh, subscribers motor will be running nicely and then we're going to take that city of stoke on trent up to the main layout for a bit of a run okay stick with me and we'll be back right well this is always the fun bit connecting things up and trying them but i've made a slight mistake here and i didn't notice this myself when i was looking at the motors earlier but perhaps you can see we've got two different lengths of these ring fields now. There are variations, but of course, what that means is, unfortunately, the little test chassis I'd got ready to put the rebuilt motor in is gonna be useless because that's designed for the longer motor. And what we have here with the subscribers motor is a shorter one, but never mind. I've connected it up. We'll try it in a second, but uh, let's just have a look. I've put a little bit of white grease in each of the bearings to hold the balls in, the smallest amount of oil. Um, I've just put a wire to that screw and then to the pickup. Um, brushes are all refaced and everything's back together. Now it probably will take a little bit of running in, 
but let's just put some power on. So observe this worm. And as I put the power on, I do hope you can see that there's a really nice smooth running there. I've got that set at a slow speed so you can almost see the, the worm revolving. And that just shows that we've got a nice straight armature shaft. And there's no doubt that this new commentator is working really well. So I've quite enjoyed fixing this motor. Let's just try it in the other direction. So already this motor is becoming quite responsive. You've just got to bed those brushes in. But there we go. Just running it under light load for a few minutes would be advantageous. But if if you're anything like me, I'd be putting that in a loco and just gently running it around the layout. And I think this is probably going to turn into a good runner. They're made very well, these motors. So what it really wants is running in the smallest amount of oil adding, but not too much. And then just have fun and enjoy. So I'll get this back to its owner and I hope they find that it's a good runner. I think it'll be all right. And then to finish off the video, as I said before, we're going to head up to the Triang Vintage Super 4 Railway and we're going to run this now beautifully modified City of Stoke-on-Trent. So we've got the larger wheels to compare with another model and then a little bit of running to enjoy. Now I've got quite a bit of work on today so I'm going to just sneak in this bit of running first just to give me uh, a little bit of um, enthusiasm to go into the day's work. So join me in a second up at the railway. So I've made it up into the loft and uh, here's the two City of Stoke-on-Trent's sitting next to each other and hopefully you can see the difference that putting the slightly larger wheels on the loco has made. So the one I'm just moving slightly is the original and that's just untouched. That's from the collection. I do have the box and the paperwork. Um, this is the one we've worked on in the last two or three videos and I think it looks quite good with the larger wheels. So I'll let you decide. But to finish off today now, I am going to put the modified Stoke-on-Trent back up on the track and we'll just have a minute or two watching it haul these Pullmans. Well, as even more rain seems to be falling today, it is great to snatch a few minutes up here and just get a little bit of running. Now look, doesn't, doesn't this loco look great? OK, it's not probably terribly accurate, but I think it looks really good with those castle class wheels fitted. The black livery and the black wheels look really good together. And it's very convenient of Wren to have kept the wheel spacing on the castle class loco exactly the same as this city. So everything swaps over really nicely. OK, time for some running. I'm moving over now. I'm going to try and get the power on. I want to see if I can get a, a nice five pole start. Something really smooth. So let's just put power in. See if we can get the loco away. And it is eager to move. Just love watching it go around the back of the layout. Just going to leave it at this slightly slower speed for a minute because I'd like to get a nice look at it as it comes through the big station. Who'd think we were looking at components made in the early 1970s and a body shell that goes all the way back decades before. Not bad, eh? Well, there's a bit more power and it's it's getting up to express steam speed. I've had great fun. Just a couple of hours 
fettling that ring field motor. It's good fun changing the commutator. A little bit of running in and I think that's going to perform well for some time to come. I hope you've enjoyed seeing my progress with that and looking at this loco back on the rails. I think this is probably the last time we'll be looking at this loco now. I haven't really got much more I can do to it. Now on a note about the channel, I am sorry for the braking uploads. It's just incredibly difficult sometimes to manage my time and allow enough to find something from the collection and film it and get it ready for you to watch on YouTube. And I'm also sorry to say that I do have a family trip coming up, so I'm now going to be away until more or less the end of March. But it will give me time to try and think of things to feature on the channel when I get back and maybe some of the things that I've said we're going to do and I haven't got around to yet, I'll finally get there. I am conscious that the finishing of the refinishing of body shells seems to have taken a back seat. It's just really difficult at the moment to prioritise some of these projects. Let's just reduce the power slightly. The main thing about having a hobby like this that you fit in around other things in your life is that you can just adapt what you're doing to suit the time you have. And take it from me, and I'm sure you know this yourself, that anything to do with these can suddenly lead to a lot of time disappearing quite quickly. You just wonder where it all goes. Well, I think all that remains for me to do today is just wish you a happy March. Hope things brighten up soon and we get into a proper spring. And maybe when I'm back again next time, the sun will be out and everything will be looking a little bit more like the season of spring. Once again, thanks for watching and taking the time to comment. And for now, I'll say goodbye.